Hey, good morning, Build on the Rock. I'm Pastor Joe, and welcome to our Sunday message. We're so thankful that you're joining us. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we're going through the book of Acts. Uh, we're going verse by verse. Uh, and God has taken us on a pretty awesome journey of really re-identifying who the church is, uh, that we are the church. And so what does that look like? Uh, we're in Acts chapter 5. Uh, we just got done hearing about these powerful works of God that God calls you and I to do. Uh, and we're going to pick up in verse 17. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you a little story that kind of goes along with our message that happened to me this week. Um, it's district conference week. And what that is, is uh, all the licensed workers and pastors in our denomination get together and uh, we just hear from God. We kind of get in line with the values of our district. And uh, we try to hear really God's heart and get inspired and encouraged as we go through the next year. And so personally, it's one of my favorite times. And so uh, this year was virtual. And so we had to work through it. But me and Alyssa still, um, we went down uh, to Manahawken and uh, kind of spent some time there really focusing, uh, getting ourselves right before God. But uh, we went out for lunch one day. It was really awesome. It was like great. It was, we haven't been out for lunch in a long, long time. And towards the end of lunch, uh, there in walks one of my coworkers, a guy that I work with that I kind of rub shoulders with, not on a daily basis. I'll see him once in a while, say hi or what's up, kind of thing like that. Uh, he's not talkative. And, um, and so I just said hi. And that's all I said. Here he walked in with his wife and I'm there with my wife and all I said was hi. I didn't say, hi, how you doing? This is my wife, Alyssa. Like, and maybe continue a conversation. Because, like, I mean, think about it. Like, I'm in Manahawken. I'm, what a coincidence. Like, our school's up in Manchester. He must live down there. He's probably thinking, what the heck am I doing down here? And I am going to uh, this church where that is church planning right now. Like that's where our conference is at. Like, wow, what a connection. What a story. What a, a beautiful way to connect him to Main Street. And guess what I did? I froze. I like, just froze. And I didn't want to deal with it. I was like embarrassed. Like all of a sudden, like it was just like this awkward, like not any more conversation. I'm sure you've had some of those before. And uh, there was like no conversation after my hello. And there was no conversation as I was leaving. It was kind of like embarrassing. I didn't even like, I was going in the wrong direction and I had to go walk back because it was just a mess. My wife even asked me like, what is up with you? And I said, I don't know. She's like, you gotta fix that. And I do. And so I started thinking like, what do I gotta fix? I think like so much, I bring so much myself, like man stuff into a conversation. And, and what, I, what I completely miss is the God moment, okay? This moment where I invite God into the equation of everything in my life. If you want to know more about this God moment, you got to talk to Pastor Frank. Man, he is... Uh, all about this. He came up with this acronym. It's so cool. I don't want to be the spoiler on it. But if you took his class last year, I'm sure you know about it. But I need to recognize that this could have been an opportunity. This was a divine encounter. Like I see this guy every day up in Manchester, but now here we are outside of our normal surroundings, outside of our, like in a sense, our element. And now we can have a normal human being like interaction. But for me, I need to invite God into those moments. But instead, I cowered away from it. I didn't look at it as an opportunity to build a bridge or start building a bridge that one day could connect my life and his life or so that the gospel can be brought into that conversation. Instead, I looked at it as an inconvenience. And I'm going to steal something from Pastor Chris, but here I am. I have the gospel, the keys to the kingdom. And it, by me not using them or looking for ways to use them, use the gospel in my life, I'm actually committing cosmic treason. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when I'm reading through the book of Acts, that's all I see is gospel, Jesus. How could Jesus enter into this moment or that moment or this moment right now? 
But any, many times I've neglected this call, this, this call in my life because the enemy has duped me in some way. I've allowed him to speak these lies into my mind. You'll be made fun of. They'll laugh at you. They're going to reject you. They're not going to receive the message. Oh, you don't have to bother with him. Oh, it's just going to take up time and it's going to be pointless. So what? So what? If they make fun of me, reject me, if I'm going to waste time. So what? I'm, I'm bringing the gospel into this guy's life that hopefully a seed will be planted or it was planted. And I'm just watering now on top of that seed. But shame on me. Shame on us. When all of a sudden we make up the excuse and we cower out of bringing the gospel to someone. Uh, guys, it's almost like we create our own persecution. We make it up. And, and here's the sad thing, is we look at the radical Christians today as being the person that is sharing the gospel to other Christians who know the gospel. Sharing the gospel to other people who go to church like, yeah, it's good to do that. That's why we're all meeting today, right? But like, God has called us to be a radical people, a weird people, a different people, a people that are set apart, a called people. We need to be boldly proclaiming the gospel to people, whether they reject us or if they reject the gospel. We need to do it. Because this is what we're called to do. Matthew 28, go and make disciples. Uh, we need to, we're commanded to go and bring the gospel, this message of hope, of deliverance to the world. We need to go pick fights. I know it sounds crazy, but um, you're going to go find yourself some trouble. I heard this quote by um, Kelvin Walker, our district superintendent. He kept on saying it over and over again. We need to find ourselves some good trouble. Uh, places where we can cause a little bit of problems by bringing this truth into people's lives. So we're going to take a look at what the apostles did in Acts chapter 5. How did they do this? How were they being so radical? How were they able to bring the gospel to a people that they knew we're going to reject them and reject the gospel, but they still brought it anyway. Let's take a look. Now, Acts chapter 5, uh, we're just going to read verses 17 to 20. It says, Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they'd been told, and began to teach the people. There's some important things here. There's a group of people called the Sadducees. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they ended up making up the whole uh, full assembly of the elders of Israel. But uh, they were two different teachings, two different belief systems. Uh, but really, they were all Jewish. Uh, they were all people of Israel. So um, these people started to get jealous, jealous of the recognition, jealous of the, the praise, jealous of the, the following, jealous of all the people that were not, now not just going to temple to uh, do their religious ceremonies, but instead to go and find this new life in Christ. And so here they are. They threw them in jail. They got angry and they wanted them to stop. They, they called the full assembly. They wanted all 71 elders of Israel to meet and they wanted them in jail while they were meeting so they could figure out how do we stop these guys? Well, an angel brings them all out. Here they are standing in the middle of the temple the, uh, and the temple courts. The angel says, hey, go preach this new life again. And they do. They do. It's like they're about to stand before the same people that killed Jesus 
and they still listen to God? That's our first point for today that I want you guys to get. That how do we be the called people, the radical people, the people that go to the people that will reject the gospel, the people that will reject you and still bring the gospel? One, we listen to God and not to man. We listen to God. They went to the temple and they taught the people this new life. Why? Because the angel told them so. Because Jesus told them so. And instead, they didn't listen to themselves. They didn't listen to their own feelings. They didn't listen to what mom said or dad said. They didn't listen to what their friend said. They listened to what God said. They didn't listen to what their coach said. They didn't listen to what their teacher said. They didn't listen to what the boss said. They didn't listen to what their coworker said. They listened to what God said. And when we listen to what God says, yeah, we might find ourselves in some trouble. But I want to tell you something. We're going to find victory. We're going to find that this, maybe it's not going to look good. It might not be victorious in the way that we would like it to be sometimes. But guess what? Here's the one truth that you can hold on to and know for a fact. That God is with you. God is with you. The last thing that Jesus says, one of the last things that Jesus says in the Great Commission is, And lo, I will be with you always. All the time. Never leave you. Never forsake you. Wow, that's a powerful message to hear. So that they can know and stand in the middle of the temple courts as they were just thrown in jail. An angel somehow got them out. There's got to be assurance in them that, you know what? We can do this. God is with us. God is for us. Let's go. Let's preach this gospel. So one, you and I can be these radical Christians that are sharing this gospel to people that will reject us and will reject God. And and it doesn't even matter because we can be assured that we are listening to God and God is with us. Let's continue on. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin and, and to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, and you filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood, meaning Jesus. Um, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead whom you killed by hanging him on the cross. God exalted him to his own right, his right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgiveness of their sins. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom you have given, who as God has given to those who obey him. I, I, I know we just kind of hit this obey point, but the point that I want us to see here is that the boldness that the apostles had the boldness that they were willing to have to stand before the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Now, please remember, these are unschooled, ordinary men. Now they're standing before the top teachers, the top religious scholars, the people that are like the cream of the crop. It's like in the Catholic Church, it's like you're standing before the Pope. And here they are, are basically rebuking the elders of Israel. Unschooled, ordinary men. Rebuking the elders of Israel. What confidence they must have. What boldness they must have. But here's the scary truth that many times instead, what you and I would do is simply go, I know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And we'll walk away and we won't do it. We won't share about the truth, about what we really believe in. We're, not a, we're, we're afraid to lose uh, what may people our identity, or what may people may think about us. We're afraid to lose our job. These people are not afraid to lose anything. They're willing to go boldly. So what I want to do is I want to read uh, a commission or a, a charge by Charles Spurgeon, one of the great teachers in the Christian Missionary Alliance and around the world. He wrote this to speak to the bold heart. Now I charge every Christian here. So I charge you um, uh, wherever you're at, at your house, church, or at home. I charge you to be speaking boldly in Christ's name. 
according to the opportunity that you have. And, to, and especially to take care of this tendency of our flesh to be afraid, which leads practically to endeavors to get off easily and save ourselves from trouble. Fear not. Be brave for Christ, building on the rock. Live bravely for him who died lovingly for you. Building on the rock. Be brave. Be bold. Stand for Christ. He's with you. Holy Spirit is in you. Let's go on to our third point, and we're going to read just one verse. Verse 40. His speech, or I'm sorry, let me, let me preface this with this. Uh, get, this uh, teacher, uh, after the full assembly got so angry about what Peter and the apostles said, this uh, uh, Gamaliel, I always pronounce his name wrong, uh, said he's one of the highly respected teachers in Israel. He actually taught the Apostle Paul everything that he knew. And he was one who stood up in the full assembly and he basically gives reference to two other people that rallied people around them. Uh, one guy named Judas and the other not guy named Thudius. And so um, as they gathered people around them, persecution came and guess what happened? The whole entire movement that they, this Judas and this Thudius, Judas and Thudius had basically just died out. And so, so Gamaliel, he says this, he says, he basically says, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go for the purpose or activity. If, if it's of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, uh, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Verse 40, he, his speech persuaded the men. They called the apostles in and they flogged them. Okay, then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. It's like, like, like they gave him a, a really good spanking on that, that hiney and they told him, don't do that again. Now, most of the time, people, when they get a flogging, they would probably stop doing it. Okay, because a flogging was also known as something called like, like basically they called it skinning. You would, your whole entire body would be like almost like skinned. Skinned, like completely off. Open wounds. Like this is a serious, serious beating. The disciples accepted it. And they received it. They accepted it and they celebrated it. Guys, you and I must celebrate opportunities to be persecuted. And I'm saying opportunities because it says Jesus said this in Luke 6, Blessed are you when people hate you. When they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. When you stand with Jesus, people are not going to like you. When you stand for Jesus, people are going to reject you. When you stand for the gospel, people are going to basically push you away. But blessed are you if that happens to you. Celebrate that moment. I'm not saying to celebrate it because, oh, yeah, you got persecuted. But because the, the apostles were celebrating this moment, because at this moment, they started to look a little bit like Jesus. That the things that they were saying were, in a sense, so true, so right on, so bold, so in line with where God was leading them, that they looked a little bit like Jesus. And that is what God is calling me and you to look like. Like Him. So, building the rock, I want to call you. I want to call you out to stop being like me, the cowards. We're having those coward, cowardly moments where we shy back in fear but instead let us be a people that live out the calling of God on our life to step into those arenas that people don't want to step into to have those conversations that may seem difficult but you have them 
to start being willing to make a difference in the world, to be a people that says, hey, in times like these, I will stand on the gospel. I will not allow people to sway me or direct me or to, to influence me. Instead, I will be an influencer. I will be that person that walks into the arenas that I am in. I will be the person that will, won't shy away from trouble, but I will pursue good trouble. I will pursue making, uh, making real change. I will pursue risk taking. I will pursue the willingness to stand up to those of authority in the world and say, that is not true, sir. This is what the Bible says. Guys, we, it's, fine. it's time for us to be a little radical. I want to tell you uh, something, and I'll end with this. Something else happened to me this week. I felt like God spoke, like clear as dad, like a dream. God told me a verse. I didn't know what it was. It was forcing me out of bed early in the morning, and I had to go read it. Okay, I had to find light, and I had to read the verse. And um, this is what the verse basically said. It said, um, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you. I appoint you. Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10, I appoint you, he says. Because he's put his words in your mouth and my mouth. I believe that's for us. I believe it's for me, but I also believe it's for you. And listen, guys, if we don't live out this call and speak these words that God has given us to speak to the world, guess what will end up happening? I want you to read this in verse 17 of Jeremiah uh, chapter 1. It says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Guys, hey, here's the bottom line. If you don't do what God's called you to do, guess what's going to happen? You will live a terrible life and you will be terrified for the remainder of your life. I no longer, I'm standing before you now, I no longer want to live a life where I cower in fear, but where I obey God, I respond boldly and I celebrate persecutions that may come because I'm not afraid of them. Amen. Let's pray. God, I pray over building the rock and its people and every single person that may come across this. God, you've called us, you've commissioned us, and you've appointed us, and you've given us your words to speak. God, may we go as your church we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.